I highly suggest you stop talking about my nephew. Who's okay. scared of you now? I'm sorry, I don't talk I to Lamar. Y'all looking stupid right now. The Real World. A place I know nothing about because I spend all my time watching reality TV. Around springtime of 1992, seven strangers were picked to live in a loft and have their lives taped. This iconic concept of a show was called The Real World. Widely considered to be the foundation of reality TV, the cultural zeitgeist would entertain viewers for 25 years, each time telling different stories, good or bad. While the show wrapped up its last season in the summer of 2019, I had only begun watching it after they had ended it. That being said, I spent the last however many months binging all 33 seasons, and now I want to talk about it. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at every roommate ever removed from MTV's The Real World. Now of course, I won't be able to show everything from every season, so if you're wanting to learn more about any of these, I suggest looking for it online. There's a handful of seasons on Paramount Plus, and even the ones that aren't, I'm sure you can find online with a little extra digging. With this already being a beefcake of a video, let's just jump into it. With the cast of season 1 New York all staying from beginning to end, the first instance of this would be in the following season. Debuting on June 26th of 1993, season 2 Los Angeles brought together a group of diverse and eccentric personalities. One of these original personalities was David Edwards, a 21 year old stand up comic. After clashing with some of the roommates, it hit a boiling point when he pulled the covers off a of fellow roommate Tammy's bed. The next episode 7 would ultimately see the cast collectively decide for him to leave the house. I apologize Tammy, Tammy I'm sorry, I thought you guys were playing, I don't feel guilty. I just, don't you think I disrespect you? Dominique and Aaron, yeah, I'm glad I got to know you. Beth, I wish I never knew you. Oddly enough, this second season also saw the second person depart before the end. This one being Irene Barrera. Irene was a 25 year old deputy sheriff whom, as the oldest, kind of acted as a motherly figure. She had a relationship with another deputy and we would see the two get married in episode 12. Sadder than Irene leaving, however, was fellow roommate John Brennan's reaction to her marriage. You're gonna miss us, you all. You're gonna miss John, John's gonna miss you. He actually wanted to cry because Irene was leaving. As he was the youngest in the house at 18 years old, the two developed a solid friendship together, and her departure was definitely a tough pill to swallow. For John, Irene's wedding was probably the most difficult for him because he'd become very close and attached to Irene. Though, we did get to see them all in the same house together again 28 years later on the real world homecoming, which is a more than interesting follow-up. I'm smoking my vape, and you up my ass. So, Karen. Hey. Hold on, it's between me and Karen. David. Everybody knows my Just name. Speak up for yourself, Beth. Let me alone, please. Please, I beg you. Please David. let me alone. 1994 San Francisco season of The Real World is generally referred to as one of, if not the show's best. It is also home to what a handful of people say is the worst roommate ever in David Rainey. Better known as Puck, he was a 25 year old bike messenger whom we are introduced to by seeing him get arrested. I don't think I really had a concussion. I think I just knocked my head. Then the cops show up. They run my name, and I had like a $3,000 bench warrant for not signing up to a drunk driving school. I knew they were going to arrest me, and it caught up with me, of course, on the day I moved in with all my roommates. While he had struck up a relationship with fellow roommate Rachel at the start, his lack of empathy and care for others' personal space would lead everyone to kick him out. His nails are like, black. He literally stinks. I don't think he likes water. I feel so sorry for Mohammed. Oh, well, yeah, I'll just wear the same socks again, you know? He thinks opening the window will alleviate the funk, which is not true at all. I'm humming. <laughs> Can you see the stink coming off of me? Stick your finger in there. He walks right by me, puts his finger in the peanut butter, just licks it and goes on. I did it. That is the same hand that he was wiping in his shirt because he got, you know, it's not a low word. I, I'm getting my own food, man. I'm buying my own peanut butter and everybody else can kiss my butt. We made a decision as a house that we would like you to move out. So and that's great. You wanted me to come all the way back over there so you could tell me I was out of the house. We wanted to tell you to we, your face. face. We didn't want to tell you on a machine. Well, I think you're all really petty for this whole thing. That's what I think. This is something we've all decided, dude. We wouldn't see any other departures until 1999's Hawaii season. A spontaneous cast of 20-somethings created for so much mayhem that it almost felt unhinged. Ruthie Alcade was a 21-year-old Filipino girl whose problems with alcohol were put on full display. We see her driving after drinking in episode 9. She is. I'm sorry, right now, they're disgusting. Yeah, they're all over the road. Look at this. Hey, While episode 12 shows her breaking down in front of her sisters on the balcony. Speculating if it would be so easy to go splat. Everything 
would be gone and you wouldn't have to feel anything. It doesn't matter that mom didn't raise us. It doesn't matter any of our family wasn't there for us. What matters is me and Sarah are always here for you, no matter what, right? I know it gets hard, Lucy. I know. But before you think about jumping, you think that me and Sarah love you, okay? No matter what, we love you. No matter what crazy stunts you pull, no matter what you do, we still love you. As she and her roommates fail to compromise on how she should go about dealing with the problem, she storms off in episode 13. She met up with fellow roommate Matt the following episode, as him and her sister had been together, but doesn't actually come back to the house until episode 18, aptly titled Ruthie's Return. But there is one other casualty on this cast, that being Justin Diebler. In the first few episodes, his homosexuality makes him feel like the odd one out, specifically due to Tex initial greeting him and listening to a comedian rattle off gay jokes. Are you gay? Are you gay? Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah! 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Justin gives me this look of, I can't believe you're happy that. I just wanted to get it out there and open. Damn, I feel sorry for you, Justin, because Tech is screaming, are you gay? Are you gay? It's just not a nice thing to walk into. Aside from that, however, his presence on this season was a miserable one. He seemingly believed he was above everyone else, as he would alienate himself from all but one roommate while simultaneously trying to dismantle the house's core relationship of Amaya and Colin. I look at Amaya, who is weak, who creates a simple life for themselves, and you see someone who makes me sick. As Colin confronts him on his meddling, his only friend Kaya begins to distance herself from him, and at the same time, he receives a call that his aunt is dying of cancer and opts to leave the house for good in episode 16. Good luck, everything. I just want to let you know, I know it's like to have something sick and I would leave too. So, good luck with your family and everything. Thanks. I don't know whether to believe Kaya or Justin, they both seem to be lying to some extent, but it's good to know both sides of the argument because that way I don't look at one of them as being evil, you know, and one of them as being a saint. I realize they're both screwed up. Seasons 9 to 13 each had crazy moments, but we wouldn't see somebody actually leave again until season 14, San Diego. Frankie Abernathy was the second oldest of the roommates at 23 years old. She shocked them all the first night by telling them about her diagnosis of cystic fibrosis, which I'll let her explain. Cystic fibrosis is pretty much a disease that affects the lungs and it causes the mucous membranes to kind of block themselves up. So with your lungs, it, it's almost like having like a permanent pneumonia. What the f are you doing, doing smoking? smoking? <laughs> no. no, you just told me that. Like seriously, I don't even want to smoke around you. Why the hell are you smoking? Though? I know! Put that out. A majority of the season saw her spending time with her boyfriend Dave while struggling to fit in with the roommates and the job as they were boat crew members and she had a phobia of large metal objects. Oh. Frankie has a phobia of boats, which is kind of crazy. She just can't look at anything that just towers above her head. As she did not seem to be very happy throughout the show, she ended up leaving voluntarily in episode 23. This may seem as though she was near the end of her experience, but due to a rape allegation that left almost a month of footage out, it seems like she was there much longer than she actually was. Furthermore, her replacement roommate Charlie, though only appearing in three episodes, had lived in the house for nearly the same amount of time as Frankie. Sadly, Frankie would pass away from the diagnosis in 2007, so I would just like to observe a moment of silence for Frankie. The next four occurrences of this were across two seasons back to back, the first being season 19, Sydney. During her stay in Australia, Siobhan found herself befriending fellow roommate Parisa while simultaneously getting in arguments with other roommate Isaac. Say, don't you even start to do some dumb you. Don't you even start to do some dumb ass like that. After an argument with Parisa sends Siobhan to confiding in Isaac and Trisha, she tells them about her dilemma of either staying in Australia or reuniting with her begging boyfriend. He just hates drinking, he hates like just But if you But if he wanted to be with you as bad then he should it's give and take. You on what Give and you take. Want. Yeah, you can't yeah. just say he wants you to be like that and what he wants is what goes. Ultimately, she obviously decides against staying and voluntarily departs from the house in episode 14. The second person to leave would actually be Trisha. After countless arguments in episodes prior, things between her and Parisa hit a boiling point when she shoves Parisa over who gets to use the house phone. My fault. For that church and their work, and you're saying that you're doing it, we're calling them. Keep going. You. Hold my uh, you. All right. Right now, Trisha, good for you. I didn't hit you, bitch. Good for you. I didn't I hit you. I, I swear to God, I will. Slam your head into a wall if you ever touch me in. As Parisa had the ultimate decision on her fate, she decided to send Trisha home in the following episode, 
much to the dismay of the other women. Ultimately though, I gotta side with Parisa on this one. Fuck Trisha. Parisa, you're not sending me home because you feel as if I'm a physical threat to you. You're sending me home because I'm the one who speaks what everyone else thinks. Enjoy your flight. Next season would be 2008's Hollywood. Season 20. After winning an online contest for the final roommate of the season, we were introduced to Greg Halstead, or better known by the chosen one, or pretty boy. The male model instantly alienated himself from the rest of the house due to his lack of enthusiasm, impatience, and disinterest in the season's job of performing improv. I am Greg and I am perfection. People told me I'd be the most hated one in the house. So I guess I'm just living up to people's expectations, but I can handle that. Question is, can they? Ultimately, though he got in conflicts with everyone in the house, it was his missing improv class that got him kicked out in episode eight. The other roommate this season saw leave was personal trainer and aspiring actor, Joey Kobar. Do you hear a lot of people say, I'm moving to LA to become an actor and stuff like that. And you know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but uh, I have a lot of confidence in myself. Right. I think I could do it. And if anybody tells me I can't, with a long history of addiction, Joey was thrown back into the pit of his demons as he went out partying and drinking with his roommates. He was ready to exit the house completely in episode 4, but he and production reached the conclusion of his entering treatment, similar to Ruthie. We're willing to seek treatment. We can take you to a place and do a 30-day treatment program, and then you can come back to the house. Yeah, please do that. Yeah, please. Okay. He moved back to the house the same episode Greg would move out, but would permanently leave the following episode 9 after worrying about the chances of relapsing. This is going to be my last confessional. You know, and I'm sad, but... I hope that every single person understands that... I have to go. Terribly enough, Joey would be the second and only other person on this list to pass away, specifically in 2012 to painkillers. With that, I would like to observe another moment of silence for Joey. Season 22, Cancun, would be the next season we see someone leave the house early. 22-year-old Joey Rosmus was a high school dropout with a penchant for music. His contentious relationship with fellow roommate Aia began in episode 2, where he would spit in her food after she made fun of his look. Yeah. Herpes on your lip! Herpes on your lip! Herpes on your An argument between her and him in episode 5 had led her to committing self-mutilation, which Joey lacked any empathy for, putting up signs around the house telling Aia to just go home. Aia, anytime I can be a d to her and have a good joke or something that will piss her off, I'm absolutely gonna take that. Hopefully she'll get so upset that she wants to go home. What makes this even more wild in hindsight is the fact that the two actually have sex at the end, but that's besides the point. Oh my god, what the hell is going on? Joey and Aya are having sex. This is crazy. Okay, what's going on? Is this really happening right now? What? 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 His reason for being kicked out would actually circle back to the cast volunteer work with Student City, which I wholeheartedly believe is the worst job on the show. Even though the cast didn't follow the rules entirely, the notion that they couldn't drink on or off the clock is quite horrific, especially when you're in Cancun. He missed the shift in episode 6 and woke up late in episode 7, where he was ultimately fired and sent home. It's not your responsibility, it's his, so tell Joey I'll call him back, okay? Okay. All right, bye. Okay. Whatever. And just to be clear, he did return in the final episode as a surprise guest, which explains his relations with Aya in the finale. And might as well mention how Bronny had been evicted from the house in episode 9 after yeeting a fire extinguisher off the balcony, but was allowed to stay in another off-site hotel for the rest of the season. You suck, fire extinguisher! <laughs> this is open. Mm. Your lock defies your 
sign. The following season 23 of DC is generally viewed as one of the show's most boring, but I can't deny that it had its moments. Some of these moments include the childlike attitude of roommate Erica Lauren. The 21-year-old aspiring singer-songwriter came into the house with a boyfriend, and this was a main point of conflict for her during her time in the house. She also discusses her experience with depression a couple times in the season, which troubled fellow roommate Ashley, as she had been experiencing the same without overcoming it. Damn it. It's great that Erica has recovered from depression, but I'm still suffering with issues with it, and it's not as easy for me to talk about. And it's tough for me because every time that Erica talks about depression, she talks about her family and how she turned to them. And I wish that I had that support that she has. I don't. Though she got off on the right foot with fellow roommate Josh, episode 8 would see this thrown off as she jumped in to replace him as a vocalist in his band when he went to answer a call. Yeah. Erica, me and her had this ongoing, unspoken competition. I'm starting to meet all these musicians, and she has nothing to really work on. I think she's just jealous. <laughs> Finally, she had called out arguably the closest person to her in the house in Callie for being standoffish after she didn't interact with Erica's boyfriend's friend. This prompted a large reaction from Callie while simultaneously leading to Erica's departure in episode 12. And I'm sorry that me and Evan don't have a connection. That's not my fault. You were totally standoffish to them. I'm standoffish and it's insulting to all guys. To me. I wasn't trying to be that way. I all wasn't standoffish to them. I wasn't. Was I standoffish? Am I a bitch? Am I standoffish? I'm a standoffish bitch. And Erica, I've been a good friend over two months, but now I'm a standoffish bitch. So I am, that's, I'm a terrible person. <sighs> yeah. I think Erica is gonna arrive at home, drop her bags, look around, and the minute that she's alone and has some time to reflect on everything, I think she's gonna immediately regret leaving DC. If she wants to live with a guy after dating him for two months, that's her issue. I hope nothing but the best for her, but I assume nothing but the worst. The next season 24 New Orleans would bring us one of the worst roommates to ever grace the show in Ryan Leslie. From his comments on Jemmy wearing something that's asking people to rape her. Is that what you wear? Yeah. Girl, you're gonna get raped out here. That's like asking like, hey, please stuff me in a couch and girl oh. That's all you're asking for. That's what I'm asking for? Mm -hmm. Okay. And homophobia towards Preston in episode one alone once one of us That's touch you happened. with our lips, it's like the princess and the frog. You guys touch me and I feel like killing It's myself. like princess. That's what happened to Preston. Whoa! That was Whoa, that was really harsh, dude. No. That was really harsh. It's a tragedy to say it only gets worse from here. As I would love to do an entirely separate video discussing the worst roommates from the show, I'll give an abridged description for now. He tried striking something up with fellow roommate Mackenzie, only to do the same with her friend in the following episode. I have been looking around for, um, a pretty cute girl to hook up with, and it's very convenient that Susie is, is here and that Kenzie brought her here and I didn't have to do anything. He actively decided against doing any chores or cleaning up after himself. What are you gonna do right now? Go upstairs. Can you clean the kitchen first? Yeah, I will when I'm going to, okay. When are you gonna do it? Hey, Mom. It's annoying everyone in the house. Hey, well, you know what? I'm not really worried about that, so. And I'd be remiss to exclude his rubbing Preston's cigarettes in his asshole. Don't worry, though. Preston cleaned the toilet with his toothbrush. He just peed on Ryan's toothbrush. What? Oh, I just pissed on it. It all culminates in episode 10, where he refused to talk about bringing a beer to a drug abuse class, which prompted the entire house to easily evict him. You know what I'm Ryan? All right. Nice to meet you. So we're gonna drink a can of beer yeah, while we're right now. No, that's not okay. So, so it's too. Oh, this kid is the biggest idiot I have ever seen in my entire life. While he may not have been the greatest person, I cannot deny that he provided constant entertainment and surprise. And seeing him show up in the finale to take the photo shoot with the rest of the roommates is one of the funniest things I've ever seen on the show. <laughs> I'm gonna miss all my roommates so much. It's listen, okay, it's listen, okay! Listen to me, stop oh yelling. my god, get the out my stop. face. Great times, roommates. Oh man, you guys were fun. I will not get the out. You're mad at me right now. You're mad at me right now. Be scared. I'm back in New Orleans to do a photo shoot with my roommates ex-roommates. Season 25 saw the real world in Las Vegas for the second time, and honestly, I enjoyed this more than the first. It's one of my favorites. Maybe that's because of Leroy and Nani, who some of y'all may recognize from the challenge like I did before watching the season. Leroy has become like family to me over the last 10 years, and yeah, we've gone through some things in the past, 
But no matter what, he and I are always gonna ride for each other. That's just who we are. For us to make it here 10 years later, it's crazy. You know, we've been through so many different emotions on these challenges, but no matter what, Nani has always been my number one girl in the game who I vow to always protect. Suffice to say, neither of them were the removed roommate, but it was 22-year-old Adam Royer. Adam describes himself as having a rough upbringing, selling drugs at age 14, and getting arrested at age 16 after being an active participant in a shooting. I was 16, we started like robbing drug dealers, and this one guy that we robbed, he didn't want to give up the drugs. So my friend like went to hit him with the butt of the shotgun, and, like knock him out, and the kid moved out of the way, grabbed the shotgun out of his hands, and then turned and he shot it at me and my friend. So he like missed us, and when he did that, my other friend shot him. He also eventually sleeps with Nani, prompting her to break up with her boyfriend. Though he continued to maintain an outside relationship himself. Oh, I'll tell you right now, every guy cheats. The <laughs> reason that Mike gets picked on so much is because he's he's the, he's the one percent, and it's the abnormal. You know what I mean? I'm not saying we're. No. We do no, right, you're saying but you're, he's the abnormal one. You know what I mean? The toxicity boils over in episode five with his drunken, violent stupor around Nani. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Your shit's working. Just chill, bro. Yo, 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 yo. But even before that, we can see his problems with alcohol in the second episode as he gets kicked out of the club for throwing a glass bottle on the ground. I don't really care what they think at all. I'm kind of just like, just shut up and drop it. I'm just sitting there like, I know no repercussions are going to come from this whatsoever. He eventually gets banned from the club in episode 6, which is also when the hotel decides to ultimately evict him. On top of all of that, this episode is one of the four audio clips I use in my intro, so that's nifty. Is that not going to happen? Well, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be like, yo, no, I'm gonna understand change. That. I understand that, but I'm not going to If gonna I don't mean it. He just sat here and told y'all that he will do it again. You toss him if it happens again? What kind of f you want? What kind of f you want? Y'all looking stupid right now. The location of St. Thomas for the 27th season was one most fans weren't fond of, but personally, I had a fun time watching it. Of the two roommates named Brandon, the one we'll be looking at is Brandon Kane. Being a former heroin and alcohol addict, he had come into the house being six months clean, though he began drinking again with his roommates. I was at a party one day and just, I did a line with this like really hot girl, and after that I was, I was just hooked. And I just, I mean, yeah. But then I would do heroin to come down from my coke binges so I could sleep, and it was like, I've kind of done it all. I think right now it's like six months clean. Seriously, I'm really proud of you because the fact that you're able to bring it up, bring it up like that, just come right out. It's part of who I am. Yeah, I don't know, I just, I just kind of want to just get the, out of the way. While out in the clubs in episode two, Brandon got in an argument over a girl he was dancing with, only to see her again later in the episode, ultimately get denied and respond poorly. Look at him now. He's hurt, feels terrible, and he feels humiliated. Or if you were gonna bring home the same girl, it'd be a different conversation. I think that you and you think you're better. With the housemates, notably Swift being worried Brandon's temper is set off by women and drinking, he ultimately gives it up in episode six. We don't need me running around getting all emotional and When Brandon drinks, he gets very, very depressed or becomes a, kind of a loose cannon. Seeing somebody take the responsibility to say, I have a problem, I don't need to fix it. I respect him for that. After bringing a girl back in episode 10, however, the drinking came right along with it. Though concerning to others, it is ultimately a drug test in the following episode that gets him sent out, where he admits to having done cocaine in the bathroom with some random lady. Let's get it all out in the open. The night before my drug test, a girl drags me in the bathroom. We did a bump, if you'd even call it a bump. There you go. I did it. I f***ed up. Do you think you deserve to stay here? No. Tell me. I broke an agreement. So if I get sent home, I can't get mad at anywhere but myself. The next few came from the season of Portland in 2013. First, we had Joy, an athletic 22-year-old who posed for Playboy at age 19, somewhat straining her relationship with her parents. I decided to do Playboy. It was kind of a proud moment for me. I was glad they chose me. I was proud that I did it. I have no regrets. And I did it because it's something that most people will never be able to have the chance to do. Aside from getting in an argument with Jordan alongside Anastasia, her lack of intrigue with jobs in Portland led her to voluntarily depart in episode 3. Avery and Johnny were a couple in the house, and might I add they had the highest sex drive, going as far as hooking up in the bathroom of their pizza shop job on the first day. This is the first time I've ever had sex in a restaurant's bathroom. This is out of the ordinary. Banging in pizza meets the bathroom with Avery. Having good sex. Day one. I'm the job. 
The bathroom is a wash right now. Are you serious? They're in there. They're in there. They had their ups and downs, but the final straw had been one physical thing leading to another between them and Naya in the penultimate episode. With Jordan being the only person to think Naya should leave, the couple mutually decided to check into a separate hotel for the last few days. And fuck it, might as well add their dog Daisy in there too. She's in the intro too, so maybe she is a roommate technically? Who knows? As we're now entering the era of seasons with twists, some seasons roommates are all over the place. And season 29 explosion is a great example of that. Ashley Mitchell, who would go on to be known as Millionaire Mitchell, displayed volatile and annoying behavior while drunk in episode one. <sighs> Really? No, 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 that's not cool. Oh, Come on, that's not cool. You. I'm sorry. That's not cool. There were two perfectly good hamburgers, and now Ariel's got one right here. The audacity of somebody to throw hot oil in someone's face. Like, that is crazy. I don't know who her family is, okay, but I, I promise my family will buy and sell her family. Okay, but it's not a problem. No, I don't give a f your, your family would buy my family, but that doesn't make you better than me. Yes, it does. Oh, so you're better? Okay. All right, you're cool. Go ahead. This eventually culminated in a majority of the roommates deciding to evict her in episode 3 before the twist even came in. Though, she did return two other times in the season to grab her shit and hang out with Jenny, as she lived in the San Francisco area. Once again, we're up in this place once mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Winning. Mm -hmm. Shining. Mm -hmm. The twist had been in episode 5, with five of the remaining six roommates having their exes move in, making for 11 roommates in total. You get the title now? It's Explosion, and it's their exes? P pretty clever, I know. What the hell is going on right now? Another face some may recognize from the challenge is Corey Wharton, and after his ex Lauren reveals she is pregnant and it's not his, she voluntarily leaves the house in episode 7. The last person to leave was Haley Chivers, the ex of Thomas Buell. After being unhappy with where they stood as well as his relationship with fellow roommate Jamie, the two got into a heated drunken argument, resulting in her backhanding him. They didn't like her enough, okay? Because I didn't put, she was my most recent. Ooh, Chill don't out. hit me in the face. Chill out. Feeling bad about it the next episode, she ultimately decided to leave the house voluntarily to salvage their friendship. I feel really mixed emotions about it. Like, I'm still not sure that this is the right decision, but I just need to... Whatever is going on right now is not working. Um. Season 31 Go Big or Go Home, though being released in 2016, has a cast member who would go on to be an all-star? What the fuck is this? What? What? What the fuck is this? It's, it's, this is garbage. It's beautiful. Regardless of that joke, the season saw two people be removed from the house, each in the final episode. Jenna Thomason was a self-proclaimed tomboy from South Carolina, and her political views generally alienated her from everyone in the house. The person who was most outwardly trying to form a bond with her was 23-year-old CJ Jenkins, an aspiring lawyer who grew up in East St. Louis, which isn't the greatest of areas. You know what? The reason why you were kept is so that you can be educated when you finally do make it home. I'm just gonna let you share where I'm from. That's fine. That's great. That's what I want you to do. While the two got physical in episode 10, episode 12 was the final straw as they got physical again after Jenna's friend told CJ to pick cotton. Don't say to me. You don't even know me. Go pick some cotton, bitch. Oh. Oh, did you hear her friend, CJ? Yeah. She said, go pick cotton, bitch. That's horrible. Yeah, that's fine. You are not right cyber now. cyber friends, they hug you up cyberly. You say ratchet, all of that Because you were yelling at me, I don't give a shit. Shut the f*** yelling at you right now. That's what you need to do. Realize that. Okay. Oh my God. Get her, get her. No, bitch. I'm done. For this, both women would be sent home in the final episode. I am an African-American woman who takes pride in being an African-American woman. So to allow someone to try to annihilate that from me, I'm sorry. If I get sent home early, I'm gonna get sent home with my dignity and a little bit of pride. The final season to be aired on MTV was Seattle Bad Blood and, spoiler alert, 
its ass. There were a handful of people I didn't hate. I'm looking at you, Robbie. But the fact that there were 14 roommates at one point and four left throughout the stay should speak values. The first would be Mike Crescenzo, someone who was previously cast on a season of Are You The One, another MTV show. It wouldn't be so weird until he realized he was removed from that show after hitting a girl with a pillow. Get In the first episode, he convinces Robbie to bite Theo's lip in a game of truth or dare, and proceeds to clown him for it just to have leverage over him. You biting his lip and a hashtag peer pressure, we're gonna take it. <laughs> you! <laughs> you, man. On the real though, I do have something um, on my lip, if you can get it. <laughs> Mike is being a psychological bully. I'm already to the edge, not feeling comfortable in this house. And like now he's needling and needling and needling. After he jokingly said an offensive term around the roommates. No, no, no. no. If you sign this, you said you're for real. Don't you're wolf pack, dude. Are you serious? <laughs> day one. Like, day one. Know. He decides to leave the house to avoid backlash, which just makes no sense to me. I'm really embarrassed that like I'm getting played out like this. I'm really embarrassed that I'm getting looked at like this. Uh, I'm really embarrassed that I said that uh, i feel really ignorant i feel really stupid so at this point i i just want to get out man i, I want to go home moving on though we get another exit in the following episode this one following an argument between theo and his bad blood cassius after talking about the root of their bad blood theo was ultimately the one sent packing though they probably both could have gone but mtv couldn't have another person leaving well regardless supposed 21 year old tiara hooks left two episodes after getting a positive pregnancy test back and i said supposed when referring to her age because she went through the whole season claiming to have an authentic english accent i'm a military brat so i was u.s born and then I was UK raised, so it kind of grew up everywhere. Only to lose it in her final appearances. I think that all of us in this house have things to work on with ourselves. So make of that what you will. And with the next episode being the finale, we saw Mike's bad blood Peter getting removed. Just like Ryan Leslie, I want to keep this brief as there is so much to look at with this man for a worst roommate video. With that, his ultimate reasons for leaving included instigating a physical altercation, being verbally abusive, and physically abusive to a fellow roommate, as well as the production crew. And I almost forgot about this last one, but surprisingly enough, the Facebook season set in Atlanta saw one person leave in the final episode. This person was Clint Wright, who, fun fact, is the oldest roommate across all 33 seasons of the show. His behavior doesn't really match this, however, as he was super controlling in his relationship with Tova, and we'll get into it a couple times with Dondre. I'm really not so you're gonna smack a drink out of my mother Hey, I can act like no. it ain't. Yeah. Stop. Dondre. I am. You bitch. No, 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 no. He also seemed to have a problem with his fellow roommate, Megan, as he went off on her about her taste in men back to back in episodes six and seven. Saturday, we're coming back here because they have NFL parties. Megan, why are you such a jersey chaser, honey? Jersey chaser? No, I'm not. Oh, you are. I'm a sports reporter. Uh, this is my job to make those kind of connections. Which one, Brett? <laughs> Oh, really? Because he's sexy right now. Exactly. In 10 other bitches, wake up. <laughs> you wake up. I don't no, care. I'm not. I'm woke up. Episode 8 sees Clint and Dondre both agreeing to lessen their alcohol consumption in lieu of their arguing. I didn't come here to fight. You know? I agree. I'm not here to fight with Clint at all. Or any of you. Ultimately though, Clint begins backtracking on his 29th birthday in the second to last episode, going as far as running away from production. Because of this, he would be removed from the house in the final episode. At the end of the night, he put me in a hotel, and honestly, I don't remember really what happened after that. I wake up this morning, one of the producers steps in and says, uh, well, Clint, you got kicked off the show. Though he would come back to say goodbye to Tova, which I felt defeated the purpose, but whatever. Now, obviously, not every case I showed was someone being told to leave the house, so let's look at the numbers. There were 12 people that voluntarily decided to leave the house, one dog that exited the house with its owner and one brawny that got kicked out but was able to stay at a nearby place so in totality there were 16 house guests ejected or removed from the real world house however you want to put it 
Okay, so we've finally gotten to the end of this behemoth. I never expected this video to be as long as it is, so a genuine massive thanks to anybody who made it all the way to the end. I hate going through the whole rigmarole of ending a video asking all the like, dislike, like you already know it. if you like it, you like it, you dislike, you dislike. If you have any suggestions for a video idea, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I read every single comment. So yeah, until whatever and whenever my next video is, always remember, enjoy yourself.